Welcome to lecture 59, static keyword. So throughout the entire course, the static keyword has come up many times. We see static right now in static void main. The main method is static. Every single time we had to deal with functions inside of this class, we had to make them static. We saw recently in operator overloading how our operators were marked static also. So in this lecture, I want to finally discuss what is static. And then hope you understand why when we build functions in, in like for example in this class right here class program why did we have to make those functions static also so to, to demonstrate this concept i also brought back the person class from the last lecture once again and we're going to make something static in here to actually demonstrate what static means let me first explain what the opposite of static is so when we don't specify the static keyword that means that that whatever it is, it's called an instance something. So for example, if this is a variable, this is called an instance variable. If this is a, uh, well, these are properties. This is an instance property. Instance means that it's unique to every instance of the class. Because a class is a blueprint, you can create many instances of that blueprint. You could have many people like we had in the last lecture. We had many different types of people. Each person, has their own name and age. That's why it's considered an instance variable because each instance has their own variable. What static means is that anything you mark static, it's for the entire class. So each instance does not have their own version of it. Rather, there's only one version of it for the entire class. That's what static means. Once again, I'll say it again. Static means that anything you make it mark static, it is applied to the entire class. So if you had a static variable, every instance won't have their own version of it. Rather, the entire class has one version of it and everyone shares that one version. So for example, what could we make possibly static in here? Let's make a static variable that keeps track of the amount of people. Now, this is really not too practical. There's other ways to do this, but let's just make a public public static int count. I'll call it count. And we'll say the count, we'll set it equal to zero. Uh, no, we'll just we'll go to zero by itself. So we'll, we have count. Now, the count is marked static, meaning that it is applied to the entire class. Every instance doesn't have a count. Only the entire class has a count. So what I want to do is every time a person is created, I want to basically just increment count by one. So I want to say count plus plus. So every time we create a new person, that means that the constructor gets called, we increase count. Now we're obviously we're not dealing with when a, when a person gets destroyed, count minus minus. This is just an example. Don't not worry. So every time a person is created, count plus plus count goes up by one. So now I want to create a person inside of main. I want to say person p1 equals new person. Person p1 equals new person. It needs a name, Ted5. So we have a person. Notice how when I do p1 dot, we do not see count anywhere. The variable count is not here because only instance stuff shows here because only the stuff that's unique and specific to this instance will, will be shown here. Because count is a part of the entire class, we don't see it here. So how do you think we would access it? If it's, if it's a part of the entire class, how do we access it? Well, it's simple. We access it through the actual class itself. So if we want to access a static, anything static of a class, we say the class name. So person dot. And notice how count shows up now. And that's because count is for the entire class. So we don't access it through it in, in a specific instance. We access, per, we access count through the actual class itself. Now, if you remember, we've seen this before. If you think about console, when we do console.writeLine, notice how when we do this, console is blue. That's because blue means it is a class. We are accessing the write line function directly to the class. We're not creating a new instance. We're not saying console C equals new console. You know, we're not doing that. We actually can't even do it. We're not doing that. And then we're not going C.writeLine. Rather, we're just saying console.writeLine, and that's because writeLine is static. And if I peek this definition again, we can actually see it is indeed static. 
So that's why we access it through the class, the entire class, and not through a specific instance. So because I created one person, let's go ahead and create one more. Let's say P2, and this, this will be Fred. When, when I actually then display the count, which is P, I mean, which is person dot count, which represents the entire count for all the people, and run that, we should see two, and, and we do, we see two. So this static um, piece of data is for the entire class. So we don't actually store this in an instance variable because each instance would then have their own copy of it. We want it to be universal for all the people, so we put it static, and it applies to the entire class. So, lastly, I'm going to go over how come when we were building static or functions, we had to make them static inside of the program. Let's go ahead and create a function without static. Public void test. All it does is print console.writeLine test. So we have this test function. If I try to call it from in here and go test, it's going to be hard. It's test, okay. So I call test. How come this is erroring? Well, the reason why it's erroring is because test is an instance method right now. That means that it is unique to this specific instance of program. Whatever instance that it gets created automatically for us, it is unique to that. So you only can use this function in a specific instance. Static main, however, is static. And static, static methods can only see static things because they don't know about the individual instances of it because it's not, it's not an instance. It's static. It's for the entire class. So it has no information on the instance stuff because it can't see that. So the reason why we have to make it static is because, like I, like I just said, main can't see test because test is instance. Only static, if you have a static function, you can only call other static functions unless you create a new instance inside of there like we do in here. If I want to call test, it has to be static because now they both are in the same scope, basically. They both exist inside of the entire class rather than one only existing for specific instances and then one existing for the whole class. So in order to do this, we, they, they both have to be static so they both can see each other. And lastly, what I want to go over is when we were dealing with operator overloading, we marked, uh, we marked our operator as static. And the reason why we did that there is because when we we're using the plus operator, we did not create any instance to do that. The plus operator is basically floating out in nowhere land. It's on its own, and that's because it's static. By making it static, we can then do that code without having to create an instance for just the plus. If, we, if, if it wasn't static, we would have to create, a, we would have to use the new keyword on the plus sign itself to create some kind of instance for that to then add them together. It would be really confusing. So by making it static, that means that the entire class can use it so it can handle any class really easily.